Probably the most often used effect in movie studio is the size position rotation effect. We use this to change the size of an image or video clip to zoom in, zoom out, move it around, rotate it, and animate the effects using keyframes. There's a lot to learn here, so I've split the tutorial into several parts. In this part one, we'll see an overview and the size and position effects. In the next part, we'll look at the rotation effect and the anchor point, along with a couple of examples. Other parts will include animating the effects using keyframing and a more detailed look at the various rotation combinations. I'm using Magic's Movie Studio Suite 2023 for this tutorial, and the same effects are in Video Pro X 14. Note that MovieEdit Pro was renamed to Magic's Movie Studio with the 2023 version. For older versions of MovieEdit Pro, Magic's Movie Studio, and Video Pro X, the principles are mostly the same. If you're using an older version, you may be a bit lost when you see the new interface and effects. I have Movie Studio Suite open to the size position rotation effect. To see the entire size position rotation effect on the screen, I'll change the windows arrangement to one that I've saved, showing the media pool full height. Also, note that the project settings are for 1920 by 1080, or a 16 to 9 aspect ratio. The size position rotation effect has evolved since MovieEdit Pro 2021. In MovieEdit Pro, Movie Studio 2021, and Video Pro X 12, the size and position interface looked like this. Rotation was separate. In 2022 and Video Pro X 13, Magix added a step. Apply effect, combined rotation with size and position, and introduced the anchor point. The zoom slider with percentages disappeared. The outline of the selected clip and the handles also changed. The rotation handle was removed. As well, Magix added combinations to the XYZ rotations, allowing for fixing different axes for rotation. The various rotation sequences are very interesting, requiring a detailed explanation which would be too much for this tutorial. In Movie Studio 2023 and Video Pro X 14, Magix took care of some deficiencies by adding boxes to change pixels to percentages, which compensated for the lost zoom slider, and adding button boxes to quickly change the position of the image or the anchor point to an edge, corner, or back to the center. To use the effect, you need a video clip or an image on the timeline. Rather than just having a black background, I'll add an image that will be the background onto track 1. We see the image in the preview monitor. I'll add a photo to track 2 below the background image. It covers whatever is on track 1. The track protocol in Magic's Movie Studio is by track number, with 1 being the lowest, 2 goes on top of 1 and hides it, 3 hides 2 and 1, etc. The background stays on track 1. For anyone coming from Vegas Movie Studio, this is the opposite of what you had. You had to insert a track above every time you wanted to add an overlay, so the background changed track numbers each time. Also, in Magic's Movie Studio, a track is a track, and you can put what you want on it. Not that you should, but you can. With the object on track 2 selected, I'll go to the Effects menu, View Animation, select Size Position Rotation, and click on Apply Effect. We now see the full interface and we see some handles at the edge of the image in the preview monitor. There's also a handle right in the middle. That is the anchor point. To help see this better, I'll zoom out in the preview monitor by opening the hamburger menu and selecting 50%. To understand modifying the preview monitor window, watch my tutorial on this. The link should be at the top of the screen or in the description. Now we see the outline of the selected image and its handles a bit better. The image fills the entire 1920 by 1080 window. Checking the properties of the image, we see that its resolution is actually 3264 by 1836, with a 16 to 9 aspect ratio, not 1920 by 1080, as is shown for the width and the height. At the top of the interface are the size effects, which allow you to zoom in and out on the clip by changing its size. Next is position, which allows you to move the image around on the screen. Next are the rotation effects, 
for rotating about the X, Y, and Z axes. At the bottom is anchor point, which can be changed from the center of the image to another location. The anchor point is the origin, and moving the anchor point affects the behavior of the size and rotation effects. Let's start with size. Besides size are two boxes, movie size and original size. By default, an image or video clip will be resized to fit the project resolution, either full height or full width, depending on the aspect ratio. So if the image is not 16.9, there will be some black areas on the sides or top and bottom. If I click on original size, the image zooms in and the width becomes 32.64 and the height 18.36. In the preview monitor, the outline of the image is now well outside of the boundaries of the 1920 by 1080 project window. However, we have access to the handles. If I switch the monitor back to 100%, we no longer see the outline or the handles, so back to 50%. The height indicated is the height of the image, including whatever is outside of the project window. Same with the width. Note the box Combine Input Fields. With this checked, width and height will always move together. Changing one will change the other. I'll go back to movie size. There are a few ways to modify the size. One is to drag a handle in the preview monitor. I'll drag the bottom right handle inwards and the image is zoomed out. The image becomes smaller and we see the background image. Note that the center of the image remains centered as the image size changes proportionately around the center handle, that is, the anchor point. The values in the width and height boxes have decreased proportionately. The aspect ratio hasn't changed because combined input fields is checked. A second way is to type a value into one of the boxes. For example, change width to 960, which is half of 1920. Press enter and the image changes to half its size. The height changes to 540 pixels. The third way is to move the cursor over the box and use the mouse wheel to change the value. The fourth way is to again put the cursor over the box and while holding down the left mouse button, drag up to make the image larger or down to make it smaller. Note that these methods of adjusting the values apply to all of the boxes under the size position rotation effects. At the far right of the width and height boxes are right and left brackets. Clicking on the one beside width resets the value to 1920 and to maintain the aspect ratio, the height changes to 1080. Beside the width and height boxes is a box showing PX. This means pixels. Clicking on the width box changes it to percent, in this case 100%. So if I want to zoom out the image so that it's half its size, I can put 50 into the box, press enter, and the image has been reduced to half its size. The height changes to 540, which is half of 1080. I can also change the pixels to percent for the height, and we see 50%. I'll change the preview monitor to 75% so that the project window will show up larger. I'll reset the height and width to the movie size and uncheck Combine Input Fields. Now you can squish or squash the image. I'll drag the right side handle inwards and the image is squished. Note that the height is still 1080. I'll reset that and drag the top middle handle downwards and the image is squashed. The width is still 1920. Reset that. Dragging a corner handle squishes and squashes or stretches both the width and height at the same time. Before continuing, I'll check the Combine Input Fields box and reset the image to movie size. On to position. The setup is similar, but with boxes for the horizontal and vertical positions of the image, and at the right, a box with button icons representing the edges of the center of the image. Right now, both boxes show zero. The image can be moved by dragging it in the preview monitor or by changing the values in the boxes. I'll drag the image in the preview monitor to the right and up a bit. The values in the boxes have changed. To quickly recenter the image, I'll simply click in the center button of the right hand box. I'll drag the image away again. 
Another way to reset the image is to click on the reset button beside horizontal or vertical or both. Let's see what happens if I zoom out by changing the size to 50%. The horizontal or X and vertical or Y positions are still zero. That is because the origin, the anchor point, is right in the center of the image and right in the center of the screen. To quickly set the image to one of the edges, click the pertinent icon button in the box. So upper left moves the image to the upper left boundary of the project window, the bottom left to the bottom, and so on. However, the ones in the middle don't quite behave as they should. Click on the center button first, then the center left edge, then the center right edge. Both are fine. Now click on the upper middle button and the image goes to the upper right. I don't know if this is a bug or intentional. To get it to work, click the center button again. Then the upper middle button works correctly, as does the lower middle button. I'll reset the preview monitor back to 100%. You can also move the box outside of the preview window, thus chopping off a part of the image. If I move further, the edges and handles disappear off screen. To get access to them, zoom out of the preview monitor as I showed before, or as I show in the tutorial about the preview monitor effects. We'll stop here for now. Before going on to part two, I want you to open a test project, import a couple of video clips or images onto the timeline, one below the other, and practice using the size and position effects. In part two, we'll look at the rotation effect, how to use the anchor points, and a couple of examples. Thanks for watching. Till next time, make movies.